Hi and welcome to another episode of Herifit FC here on Vanilla FM and today we're going to take a look at the winter transfers of 2029-2030. We, um, we've done a few transfers when we're about to play Crystal Palace as well which is going to be a bit of a tall order really because they're second in the league or first in the league, I can't remember now. But um, let's have a look at where we are at the moment and... Um, yeah, there's a, there might be a few things I don't quite remember. I haven't been, been able to play the game for a while, which is why I've not been releasing videos. It's been quite busy in life, so yeah. But here we go, back into the groove now again. Crystal Palace, our next opponent, uh, second. We are 11th at the moment, so on course to can. I think the idea this year was either to go for the win, or if we couldn't go for the win, just uh, stay at this sort of level to uh, increase our club facilities and so on and money related side of things uh, so that we can be in good stead for when we've upgraded almost everything uh, we can go for premier we have upgraded a few things so if you look at the club facilities we now have great training and youth facilities uh, youth intake isn't actually brilliant it's looking pretty bad at the moment. It might actually be better than this once it comes out. Um, sometimes there are a few things that change when the actual youth intake is delivered. But um, yeah, so not great in that respect. Youth teams aren't doing amazing either in their leagues. Um, transfers wise, look at the history for this year. We had a little bit of business towards the end of the year. Um, so we, we, we were able to make a little bit of money, recoup some of the money we used for transfers. So let's take you through those. The first one, I think, uh, yeah, I think I'll do that. Da, da, da. There was someone else here counting. Okay, sorry, I'm just getting my, my brain into gear. So if I change the screen, there we go. The first change that we had um, was uh, Freddy. We had a player called Freddy Cowan, who I believe played in the left. Yeah, there we go. So you'll remember if you watched the last episode. So he was one of our um, left defenders, and we had Josh Powell in the under 21s. But very quickly we swapped Josh Powell around so we brought in josh powell in october sorry in september sorry that's august anyway um and we stuck him in the end of 21s but actually we swapped it around quite quickly so josh powell has been playing for the majority of the season in uh, the senior team and we dropped freddie down to the uh, and the 21s and then we eventually released the uh, the loan so so he's gone back to his club um what else then another transfer that was already agreed were Josip Zugash from Dynamo um he came to substitute who was it i can't remember now um Liam Gowan, I think. Yeah, Liam was sent back to his team uh, now in January, and Josip came to fill in that spot in the midfield. So those were two transfers already agreed. Um, this one materialized in January. Then we did our usual uh, review of the team, and we got in a few other players as well. So starting with let's go through everything so we still have the same two goalkeepers tyler dickinson who's been with us since forever and uh, the other goalkeeper alfie whiteman uh, in the right side of the fence um hacken joined us at the start of the season on loan and then also where is he tj tj ayoma been with us for a while left side i've just talked about josh powell uh, we also have Harvey Araujo. Where is he? Harvey, Harvey, Harvey must be in position. There we go. Harvey Araujo also with us. In the center of defense, we have two new players. So, 
in the wide position, we have Ross Davis. He's been with us for a couple seasons now. And the other player that is new is Dan Casey. Dan Casey is new for this season. Uh, in with the transfers, been in Scotland, USA, Ireland, England before. Motherwell in recent years. Then in the non Norton centre-back position, no changes. We still have Eddie Allen on loan. And we have Max Ross that's been with us for a couple of seasons. And then in the um, central defender position, the actual central defender position, uh, Max Stitcher is still with us. But we have a new player on loan, Marvin Ekbiteta, a um, Nigerian player that's been playing for Blackpool. So that is the defence. Um, defensive midfield, we still have the same two. Dominic Ball, who's retiring at the end of the season. And Alistair Clifford are still with us. I nearly got someone new to replace Dominic, but it didn't happen in the end. The other midfielder other than Josip is Nathan. Nathan, Nathan. On loan with us as well. I think he could be a really good player in a few years' time. <clears throat> then on the right side of attack, we got one new player in. He's actually an old player, really. He was with us before. Um couple of seasons ago and is with us again he came to replace Seb uh, Seb's been given out on loan Seb Ferdinand uh, or out on loan other than uh, Tatenda we have Nathan Lamy who's been with us a while now on the left side we still have the same two Mattia Alma Viva and where is he Riley Owen the same two and in attack, we didn't manage to improve. So Riss uh, Healy, who's going to retire, so we're going to have someone new next season. And Max Guthrie. So those are the same two. So I guess for next season, the attack's going to need some serious looking at. Because they are needing some replacement, those two players. The Nemis Kwais, uh, the transfers didn't do too much harm. We have a pretty good structure at the moment. Um, and yeah, that's it. So finances wise, we recouped some money over the winter transfers, but we're still producing a net negative every month, uh, which means we are plunging into debt. But I think that debt will be quickly solved in the off season. As far as competitions go, we managed to get to the fifth round of the FA Cup. We're playing against Leeds. Um, so it's been pretty good. Actually, having that income coming into the coffers has been really good. For the Carabao Cup, obviously, we were um, knocked out by Chelsea. We knew that from the previous episode. 30 matches, which means uh, we still have about uh, 16. Yeah, 16 matches left to play. And the next one is against Crystal Palace. Now, Crystal Palace is a strong team. I'm not expecting a win here, but we are going to try and do something against them. We're playing away from home in Crystal Palace uh, Stadium. So here we go. Um. Yeah, so quite encouraging the FA Cup because obviously that brings us additional income. Um, that's always good news, having a little bit of extra income. <laughs> and obviously as we um, with time, as we improve our youth setup, we will be able to get better players from that as well. So I'm hoping that in future intakes, we'll have some players that we can really have a good look at. I think the plan is so we are obviously not going to make it to the win. That's obvious. We're so far away now. 
there's a slim chance we'll make it to the playoffs, but um, don't think there's much chance of us winning the playoffs. Um, so I think the plan is to use the income that we make over the off season. We make quite a good amount of money actually in the off season. So use that money. Obviously, the other thing I haven't mentioned is we are expanding the stadium. It's going to complete over the summer to 9,000 seats. So we can use all of that money to keep improving. Um, so improving the training facilities, youth facilities. We still have some scope to improve the recruitment, um, uh, the youth recruitment as well. Junior, ju junior coaching is maxed out. It's been maxed out for a few seasons, actually. So, so that's good. But we still have those three things that we can um, improve. And we can try try to max them out as much as we can, because that will that will make us be more appealing for new players as well. And um, don't know how much more we can expand the stadium. There's a there's a bit of a hard limit how much you can expand a stadium that's already built. I don't know what the maximum is for this stadium at the street. But when the time comes, um, I don't think we can build a new stadium with the income we have in the off season, that's for sure. So we'll have to uh, see what the board does if they take out some sort of loan or if they wait until we are in the Premier League for that but yeah we are selling out every match um, so it will be good to to get that stadium as you know as as big as as big as we need there we are playing out as I thought Crystal Palace written it off as a loss um, which is fine but yeah I think the plan is use the money to improve the facilities obviously if we improve facilities we won't have that money in a transfer budget so that is the trade-off we need to do for now um, prioritize facilities and then eventually we'll be have once we've kind of done that we'll have that money set aside to transfers instead
Oh, I must forgive. Um, you must forgive me. I completely forgot I was recording an episode, so I just went quiet for a long time. Um, I nearly switched off OBS as well. Um, anyways, um, yeah. So I'll, I'm sure I'll just put some background music, so you'll be able to just watch as well. And um, I don't know what else to say really, other than if you want to support the channel, there is a Patreon. And in the Patreon, you can sign up to name a new gen. So if you fancy doing that, um, you can head over to the Patreon. There's a link in every description, I think, and also in the channel page. And uh, essentially with that, uh, we will follow the new gen's life. Um, as uh, we come back to every save. So at the start of every every episode, um, I will go and chase up the new gens that you name, whether they're in the club or away from the club, uh, for as long as we do this um, save. Um, we're starting to think about the next version of the game as well. So I think um, Sports Interactive has already said that people are going to have to upgrade to better computers. They're going to obviously demand um, better graphics cap capability because it's being done with the Unity engine. So, uh, yeah, I just have to see what the specs are like, if I actually need to upgrade or not once they are released. But yeah, the, the, the game should be announced pretty soon, I think, for pre orders. So what we are now, May, I guess in the summer, they will announce pre-order. Um, and with that will be all the prerequisites as well for the um, machines that it needs. Uh, and then I'm assuming there will be the demo, kind of the beta um, still in October and November is the release. So trying to plan around that and obviously I'll try to play the beta as much as possible and show you that once it comes out. Okay, uh, so probably just I switched off there. I completely forgot I was recording a video. So uh, sorry for being quiet, but I think that's okay. See you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.